so this, this should last about maybe 15 minutes or so. I'm going to talk a little bit first about Civil War balloons, and then we're going to do a little uh, demonstration here in which we make some uh, balloon gas, which uh, is going to be quite interesting. I think you're going to enjoy it. And then at the end, we might have a, a, a big surprise. So uh, hopefully it will all go smoothly today. I'm sure it will be, at, le at the very least, quite interesting. Um, can everybody hear me all right? Yeah. All right, very good. So during the Civil War, which happened in the early 1860s, uh, both sides actually used balloons. And they used balloons to go up pretty high into the air. They would tie them down, so they were called tethered. And they would let them up on average about 1,000 feet, which is, you know, about 20 times higher than the treetops here. And so a good distance up. And what they would do is they would use them for reconnaissance. That means that they would look around. They would look for uh, the enemy, see how many troops they had, see where they were moving. They would make maps of the terrain. And uh, because a lot of maps they had already weren't very accurate, so these balloons were very helpful for, for going up and gathering information. And the, a common misconception is that the balloons, even if you know that they used them in the Civil War, is that they were hot air balloons. Well, they weren't. A hot air balloon floats because the hot air inside of it is less dense than the cool air outside of it. But these balloons weren't filled with hot air at all because they didn't have propane or butane, the fuels that are used for a hot air balloon burner today. Instead, the balloons were filled with a lighter than air gas. Now, the best comparison that we have today are birthday party balloons. Does anybody know what kind of gas we put into a party balloon to make it float? What do you think? Helium. That's right, very good, helium. Uh, helium is a great gas because it's really light. It's the second element on the periodic table, which means it's the second lightest thing there is. And it's also very safe. It's an inert gas, which means it doesn't react with anything. If you put a fire to helium, it, the fire goes out. It suffocates it. So helium is a great gas to use for balloons. Unfortunately, during the Civil War, hadn't been discovered yet. It was around, but people didn't know about it. They hadn't observed it. They didn't know how to use it. So uh, the, uh, the helium wasn't an option. One thing they could do, and here's a connection to the house here, they could hook up the, the balloons to city gas lines. Most cities and even a lot of villages by the time of the Civil War used what was called coal gas or illumination gas. It was a gas that was made in, in a gas works, a special factory, pumped into houses and, or into street lights and could be used uh, to light up those, those houses or streets. So they could hook up the balloon to that gas. And since the gas was made out of some things that, was, that were lighter than air, I won't get into the details right now. It made the balloons float. Now, the only problem with that is that if you were out in the field with the Union Army or the Confederate Army and you didn't have a way to inflate your balloons while well, you were stuck. So then along comes Professor Thaddeus Sebesky Constantine Lowe. Now, there's a name for you. Professor Thaddeus S.C. Lowe. And he was a balloonist for the Union Army, the Northern Army. And he figured that, that he needed a way to inflate the balloons out with the army in the field. So that's what he did. He designed a gas generator. So this looked like a big blue wooden box on wagon wheels. And it could be rolled along with the army. And it was attached to uh, a couple smaller boxes by a hose. And that's what you see right in front of you here. This is a little model uh, not really a model, but a, it's the, it at least will show you the premise of how that worked. And the, uh, the different parts of my setup here represent the different parts of Professor Lowe's gas generator. This flask here represents that blue box that was on the wagon wheel. It would have had a tank inside of it, and that's where they would mix together the reagents or ingredients to make the gas through a chemical reaction. The hose here... Mine's made out of plastic, but theirs would have been made out of a uh, uh, varnished canvas, and it would connect the big tank to the smaller boxes. And this flask here represents those smaller boxes. It, like them, is filled with water. And the water is there so as the gas bubbles through it, it will cool down. 
So you, when you put it into the balloon, it's the same temperature as the surrounding air. You actually don't want it to be hot because if it cools in the balloon, it'll contract and you'll end up with a little shriveled up balloon. And then I've got here in my pocket, my balloon. Now the Civil War balloons were decidedly more impressive than this. They were also made out of canvas, uh, or actually not out of canvas, excuse me, they were made out of silk that was varnished. And they were really big. This will hold about one cubic foot of gas. The Civil War balloons held around 32,000 cubic feet of gas. So they were about, oh, 50 feet tall, maybe 40 feet around, and could carry up, uh, up to four or five men in a really tiny basket that only came up to their knees so they could look around from there. So the, the balloons were much more impressive than this one, but this will at least give you the idea today. All right, now we're getting really close to actually doing this. First, I'm gonna show you what my reagents are, my ingredients. The first thing that I have to, actually, I'm gonna put this in first. The first thing I have here is probably the most exciting ingredient, and this is why you're standing back, why I have to make some of you move a little further back, because this is some, it's not water, it looks like water, and I have a little, uh, a little uh, poem that I'll share with you, a little rhyme. It goes like this. Little Timmy took a drink before Timmy took the time to think. And now Timmy is no more because what he thought was H2O is H2SO4. And that's sulfuric acid. Yep. So they would have used about uh, 200 gallons of sulfuric acid per inflation of the balloons that they would have put into that big tank. So I'm gonna put my, the acid I'm using here into that first flask. Remember, they would have had 200 gallons. I have just a, a few ounces here. And luckily, I didn't get any fumes. Even the fumes can really burn away at your uh, mucous membranes. Now, the other main reagent that they would have used in the Civil War was about 3,000 pounds of metal. And the metal they usually used was iron. Sometimes they would use zinc. Those are both reactive metals. Today I'm going to use aluminum. Um, it's going to work pretty much the same way. It's going to react a little bit more quickly, though, so it makes it a bit more fun. But they had lots of iron available. They had it left over from making ships and cannons and boilers and things like that. So they would have used iron instead. All right, so when I put that in there, it reacts more quickly if it's a little warmer. So today it's probably going to take about 20 seconds or so for really to get going. Uh, it will start to bubble and boil. It'll give off a lot of heat. The reaction is called an exothermic reaction. Exo meaning like an exoskeleton is on the outside to give out. And thermic, like thermal or thermometer, meaning heat. So exothermic means that the reaction is going to give off lots of heat. And this is going to be very, very hot. In fact, let me have a, a volunteer. Would you like to come up and just, just feel the temperature of the outside of the flask right now? And then I'm going to have you come up at the end. Remind me to do that. And you'll feel it then. So just normal temperature, right? Okay, you can go back and have a seat. It's also going to change color. It's going to be really quite a violent reaction. The bubbles are going to come out through the hose. They're going to bubble up through the water and then go into our balloon. So let's get the show on the road here. You've been very patient. Oh, that's all right. Put in a few more pieces. And... All right. And I'm going to put this at the top because it can build up a lot of pressure. And if it blows up, I don't want anybody to get hurt. I know it makes it a little harder to see. All right. And already, you might be able to see if you're really up close, there are some little fizzy bubbles forming around the pieces of metal. Don't worry if you can't see it yet, you will be able to. And you can see some bubbles coming up through the water here. I'll let all the air escape. And those bubbles are actually hydrogen. Now we have talked about helium, we've talked about hot air. The lightest element on the periodic table, number one, is hydrogen. And hydrogen is made in this case because it's getting freed from the acid molecules, the H2SO4. The SO4 bonds with the metal, the H2 is liberated. And you can see that color, sorry if you're over here folks, but you can see it turns that grayish black color it's really bubbling up, getting very violent. Imagine 3,000 pounds of metal and 200 gallons of acid, and the soldiers would have to be up there pouring in the acid on top of that box. It would not be pleasant. It would be extremely hot. I, I can barely hold onto this hose because it's all, already so hot in, on it uh, coming through there. And the gas is going into the balloon. The hydrogen is going right in here. There's no pump, there's no fan, there's no mechanism, no magic. It's just chemistry, my friends. Just the energy and the force created by the pressure inside the reaction flask.
And I probably could have done another balloon, but this will suffice, I think. Well, nah, we're not going to get enough to get another one. All right. So, I've told you that we've got hydrogen in the balloon. Hydrogen again, H2. Coming initially from that the acid. It was originally part of the acid molecule and was released from there when we mixed it with the reactive metal, uh, along with some heat coming off as well. Now, so far, maybe you have maybe you know the chemistry, and that's good, but otherwise, you've been taking my word for it that hydrogen is lighter than air and that this is hydrogen in here. And, hey, science is all about gathering evidence, so let's get a little evidence that, indeed, this is filled with hydrogen. The best way to do that is to see if it floats. So how about a little countdown from three? You guys ready? Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. Woo! And it is definitely lighter than air, right? It popped right up there. Now one's it back down, goes right back up. So it's not just blowing around in the wind like a balloon full of air would be doing. It's uh, definitely filled with something that is lighter than air. And that is that hydrogen gas. Now, we'll come back to that in a second. But let me take this off now. We still get a little reaction going on. At some point in the next few minutes, uh, as, as the reaction dies down, something really neat is going to happen here. But first, let me just point out to you that you might notice that there's something missing from there. The metal is gone, right? The metal is what we call the limiting reagent. It limits how long the reaction goes on because it gets used up. All the metal has dissolved. It's disappeared because it has uh, bonded with those acid molecules and turned into something else uh, called ferrous sulfate. Um, now, watch this. We're going to get a little back pressure on it. Since there's only hydrogen in air, the air pressure out here is stronger, so the air is going to push back in, take some water with it. And you can probably see that coming through right now. There's, it's going to do a little at a time today, I think. Sometimes it does it all at once. Oh, there we go. So now we have some equilibrium, meaning that it's balanced. The air from the outside pushed back in, so now it's equal pressure inside the flask as it is outside the flask. Can I have my temperature volunteer come back up? And just, just feel it above my hand with the back of your fingers. Yeah, it's really <laughs> hot, right? Very hot. So and hopefully not hot enough to burn you, but uh, very hot, right? So that's all that heat that came off from the, uh, fr from the reaction. All right. Now, let me, let me do this real quick, and then I'll take some questions, all right? So there's one other way we can tell whether this is hydrogen. And you might know why it would have been totally insane for these balloonists to actually be going up in those balloons back in the Civil War in a balloon that was filled with hydrogen. Does anybody know why it's dangerous? I'm looking for... Yes. What's that? Oh, well, if you popped it, that would be the least of your worries. Those, those balloons, if they, got, they could have a bunch of holes. In fact, they shot at them a lot. And they often filled them full of holes, but they will just leak like a rubber raft, not like pop like a, a, this balloon will. No, there's something else that makes it that makes it really dangerous. Blows <laughs> up. That's right. Hydrogen is highly combustible. That means if you add oxygen and flame, it goes kablamo. Now, I prefer not to call that an explosion. I prefer to call it a highly exothermic uh, reaction in which hydrogen is rapidly oxidized. Yes. Yeah, yes, but that just means that it's the, when you mix the oxygen in the air with the hydrogen in here, then it has an exothermic reaction, which means it gives off a lot of heat, which will look like a fireball, which is pretty awesome, in which hydrogen is rapidly oxidized. Again, the ox when any time you burn something, you're oxidizing it. You're adding oxygen. That's why you need oxygen to, uh, as part of uh, a fire. So you guys wouldn't want to see me blow it up, would you? Yes. Yeah. Oh, are, you, are you sure? Yeah! Really? Yeah! All right, all right. Yeah. Okay. This is a little tricky. Let's try it. This is always the hardest part. Come on. My later won't work. Oh, almost.
<laughs> Joe, ladies and gentlemen, wait a moment, wait a moment. Hold on. Don't thank me. Thank science. <laughs> All right, a hand for science. All right. Thank you very much.